I'd like to thank everybody for watching my latest videos and so today I'm gonna to make another video about another program related to OpenAI and like a chat GPT type of a program and so I have the Next.js React application running here on the screen and I will go into more detail but let's take an overview first and see what we're looking at here. So there's actually a lot of things going on in this program and I'll just kind of go through them one at a time and we'll take a basic look at the code. And also as I have more time, I'm going to be making more updates to this program and showing them on another video. So what we're looking at here is my dashboard that I made for this program. And also, so let's open another tab and I'll just kind of show how it shrinks down here. And so if we look at it in a smaller form factor, we'll see how the page is responsive. And so you can scroll down and see where you ask your question, where you generate your answer and the different links and so forth. So I did work on making it responsive. And there is a login system behind the scenes, which is using a database, and I'll show that briefly. And here you can see I'm logged in, so I'm logged in as Mr. AI. And if I wasn't logged in, like if I go to another page, I don't have it implemented on every page yet because some of them are like anonymous pages that you don't have to be logged in localhost so my code's running on localhost 3001 and so what we're looking at here is the statistics for me as a user because different people could be logged into the application and I'll show that real briefly also let me open up that screen so here I opened a different browser to show the login system that is using the backend security system so like if you already had a email and a password on the system, you could just put those in there and then click on sign in. And of course, since I didn't fill in anything, it tells me I have an error and then you can sign up. So then you'd put in your email name, password and confirm your password and sign up. And I have admin tools built into so that you have to be approved before you would log into the system. So I'll go ahead and close that. That's how I got logged into this. And I don't have this screen finished yet, but I'm building like a pop-up modal that will have information, helpful information about how to choose the right AI model because there are different models that I'm working on programming into this system. So again, the dashboard screen at the top left, that's my statistics. How many, or, or I guess how much cumulative cost I've acquired the prompt tokens I've used, the completion tokens I've used, and my total tokens. And then on the right side, there's a system stats because a few people have access to this and testing it. And so you can see there's a little bit more prompt tokens, completion tokens, and total tokens. Now this is a different account. So the tokens were higher when I had my original account and a different OpenAI account. So these numbers are substantially lower than they used to be but it's because this is a new account. And then at the top of the screen, we have a nav bar, which this takes you to the home page, which is what we're looking at. And then view account usage, if I click that, it actually takes me to my OpenAI, and you can see the daily usage, and you can change to cumulative or daily, depending on what you wanna look at. So. Because I'm already logged into the OpenAI, it knows to go ahead and just pop that open. And then if I wanted to go to the AI Playground, I put these in here more or less as a convenience feature. And then of course over here we have the different options that we, parameters and options that we can feed in. And right now this is being worked on so that the parameters can be fed into my program and then talk to the backend open a or open ai api so anyway that's a work in progress right now 
to put most of these into a control panel in my own application and explore the API when I'm looking up information it's just uh, again a convenience to take me over there so I can like go right to the API reference page and samples and things like that and then costs I'm building out a language models estimated costs to use this AI bot and so I have some different information on here. This is all database driven also, which I can briefly mention that once we start looking at the code. And each of these are clickable links. So if I wanted to say, look at text DaVinci 3, I can click on that and it takes me right over here to this page on OpenAI. So it's again, convenient to do that. So. You can look up each one of these language models. And charts, these are just charts that I'm working on using some open source technology. These are not done, but I am working on them. And the FAQ, this is also database driven. And so I picked certain colors actually for my new AI channel that I started not too long ago green and purple and purple stimulates the brain activity used in problem solving purple both calms and stimulates our bodies putting us in the right place for introspection and focused insight so i can zoom in on that a little bit i was just pointing out here what the internet tells us about the color purple it fosters creativity by awakening our senses i've always kind of liked the color purple and also green so they're not exactly complementary colors but they're close and so each one of these you can just learn more about all these different things join the api chat gpt waitlist request access to the azure open ai how do i get access to the open ai service timeline of key microsoft breakthroughs that's a cool chart and all these different things. So as I found information, I put them all here on an FAQ page. And then if we scroll down, this is something I found. I believe that was on a Microsoft page, which the link was above. And so you can see how this started back in 2016. And this chart went up through January 2023, where Microsoft announced their Azure OpenAI service now generally available chat GPT coming soon on the Microsoft platform which now it is so there we have those links and let's go back to the home page and I'm gonna zoom back out to hundred percent and then I have a couple other links here at the bottom just to help see if anything's going on and uh, data collection and things like that I'm not logged into this page now, so I guess I won't be showing that in the in the demo here. But the OpenAI status page will take us there. So I am on the email list, so I get emailed all the time when they're having slowdowns or issues. So I wanted to have a quick way to be able to see what's going on there while I'm testing. And then of course the GitHub status page. because I use GitHub for everything. And on, on this day, we can see everything's working well, so. And then I've talked about everything on this page, so now we have two other things that we can do here. If I click on this arrow over here on the left, it pops out all my questions that I've asked and it saves them. And so like I can click on any one of these and it will feed it in and then you can see a new dashboard here that tells you what it actually cost, how many prompt tokens there were, the number of completion tokens it gave back, and the total tokens used for that question. And so it, since everything is saved in the database behind the scenes here, it pulls your question back up. I'm sorry, the answer, and then your question is here in the box. So if you wanted to regenerate your answer, you can click on this. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so 
as you may know if you've used this, you will see that it does sometimes give different answers. Sometimes substantially, but many times they're very similar. And sometimes I can't say for sure, word for word the same. So I wanted to have a way to quickly access all of the questions. And some of them are more detailed, like we'll go ahead and click on this one. Now sometimes the longer ones get timed out because of how I'm hosting this application. Between Netlify and Vercel, there's on their default plan, it's a 10 second timeout. And I believe the plan that I'm on the pro plan is a 60 second timeout. So let's go ahead and click on this. And we can see here that it, it did write a pretty detailed response. So let's go ahead and ask it, write a research paper with 20 completed business ideas and a page of text for each of the business ideas explain 50 use cases for chat GPT and so forth. Now, it didn't actually write all of that, but let's go ahead and just submit this and we'll see if it times out or not. All right, so it took a little bit there. I hit pause. And so it also outputs the, an or the question that you asked first and then it goes on to give an introduction. It gives online educational services as the first answer, use cases for them, most popular YouTube channels and earnings, online retail and so forth. So it's, let's see how far it goes. Looks like it did 10. So anyway, I think that's a pretty interesting question and a pretty long answer. And so that's what the left panel does. Now the right panel actually is still a work in progress, but the idea is here to be able to feed in or choose different models. And I'm in process of working on that now. And if you wanted someone else to be able to run this with their own API key, or you had a second account and you didn't want to use the one that's pre-programmed in the environment variables, you could go ahead and feed it in here. And of course the other parameters that I showed, those are being worked on, which I will demonstrate those in a future video. So that is a high level overview of what this chatbot web application looks like. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull up the code and just talk about that briefly. So here I've pulled up the code in the Visual Studio Editor and you can see down here the two questions that we asked it. It has them listed down here in the console window. And so I pull up the package.json so you can see the dependencies that are currently set up here in this project. Hero icons, React, Chart.js, Date FNS, Next, Next Auth, Next Axiom, OpenAI, Pocket Base, Prop Types, React, and some other React bits. And you can see a few of the, the dev dependencies here. And then let's walk through the folders. So of course, it's a Next.js React application. So we have the Next folder there and components. So you can see all the different components that are set up for what I just showed in the working application. So everything's broken into nice components, which makes it more maintainable. This is the cost stats page or component and the footer. So that's where it's like walking through a list and outputting them into the footer of the page. This page is Hero2, which is used for displaying like the tokens slash dashboard. It's part of the components that are used to display that information on the screen, like cumulative cost, prompt tokens, completion tokens, total tokens. for the user or for 
the system itself. And let's see what else we have here. So we have some helper files to calculate the tokens mainly. And of course we have our node modules folder with all of our node stuff installed. Page data is just for some transitory information. Pages, we have several pages here and some CSS files. The FAQ page that I showed in the application, you can see here how it's talking to the pocket base and it's getting the full list of my FAQs from the pocket base. And if you look up here on line seven, that's where it's connecting to or getting the URL for the pocket base and establishing a connection so that we can grab the information here, get the FAQs and dump it into the page. And so like it's mapping through them and outputting them that, that you saw on that FAQ page. And we have the cost page, the charting page, and then we have the API for the pocket base. And I'm not gonna show every page in this video. However, I just wanted to walk through some of the, the files and folders here. And so we just have some PNG files there and services like the authentic authentication part of it, deleting questions, as you saw in the panel, you can delete questions, although I didn't demonstrate it, but you can delete them by clicking the red X. And so I just wanted to kind of give an overview of this latest chat program, AI program that I'm in the middle of working on. And I will be updating it as the open AI platform changes and I can make other videos and go into a little bit more details about some of those things in the near future as it happens. But I thought you might be interested to see this program that I've been working on. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. And I will talk to you pretty soon. I'm planning on making a couple other videos to talk about some new either features or an announced features from OpenAI in my next video. Again, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.